In this Tableau tip, I'm going to show you how to create a seismogram. A seismogram is an alternative to a circle timeline, is a great way of showing change over time, and is particularly effective when there are big variations in the data set. Let's see how to build one. So the first we're going to look at is how to create a seismogram with discrete dates. So I'm going to drag order date to the rows, expand out year to quarters, and change the quarter to months. From here, I need to create a couple of calculations. The first one, I'm going to call sales divided by 2 plus, and that's exactly what the formula is going to be, sales divided by 2. The second calculated field I'm going to create is sales divided by 2 minus, and this time it's going to be minus sales divided by 2. From here, I want to drag the sales plus onto the columns, the sales minus, on top of the sales divided by 2 plus axis to give me a combined axis view, and move the measure names field from the color shelf to the path. And there we go. We have our very simple seismogram. If I want to color the smallest value and the largest value, I need to create one more calculated field. So I'm going to call this my max or min. In this case, I'm going to say if the sum of sales is equal to the window max sum of sales, then I want to call that one the max. Else if, if it's equal to the window min, then I want to call it min else other. From here, I'm going to drag that max or min field to the color shelf. I'm going to configure my table calc to make sure it's computing by both year and month. Close that, and then adjust my colors. So I'm going to make the others maybe a light gray. I'm going to make my maxes maybe a, a shade of blue-green. And I'm going to make my, my minimums maybe a shade of orange. And there we go. We can now see our maximum and our minimum. And if you want them to be a bit thicker, just drag the size slider up. Now, when you hover over the lines, you'll see that our tooltip is not quite correct. So I'm going to drag sales onto the tooltip shelf. On my min max field, I'm going to uncheck include in tooltip. On my measure values, I'm going to uncheck include in tooltip. And on my measure and uh, and there we go, that should be it. So now we have the month, the year, and the sales. So how do we do that with a, with a continuous date? So in this case, I'm going to right click and drag order date to the rows, and I'm going to choose continuous months, and it's going to be much the same process. So I'm going to drag sales plus to the columns, sales minus on top of the axis to give me a combined axis, now this time when I move, move measure names to the path shelf, you see I get this weird line going across the top. I need to tell Tableau how to split up the view. So I'm going to drag order date to the detail shelf. Again, I'm going to choose the, and now I'm going to choose the month year option. And we can see each of our individual lines. If I drag my min max field to the color shelf, now I need to edit my table calculation and I want it to compute by both items. Again, we can adjust our colors. So I'm going to choose a gray for the other. I'm going to choose an orange color for the min, and maybe a greenish color for the max. Now notice the chart's upside down now. That's because we have it as a, um, we have our time series on the rows. So I'm going to edit the axis, and I'm going to just reverse the scale. And there we go. We now have our, um, our seismogram as a continuous axis. We're going to want to format the tooltip the same way, so drag some of sales to the tooltip, uncheck measure names in the tooltip, I'm going to uncheck my MY in the tooltip, and now, and I need to also uncheck 
including tooltip for my min-max field. And there we go, we have the correct values. So if I go back and forth, you can see the charts are identical. If I want to create a horizontal version of this, I'm just going to go through each of the steps again. So this time I'm going to right click and drag order date to the columns. I'm going to pick continuous months. And notice because this is on the columns, our dates go left to right in the correct order. I'm going to drag sales plus to the rows, sales minus on top of that axis to give me a combined axis, measure names to path. I need again to put order date onto the detail shelf. I'm going to pick MY. It splits up our view nice and neat. Drag our min max field to color. Edit our table calc to show it by month and year. And notice the colors got picked up automatically. I'm going to make my sizes nice and big to make them a bit easier to see. Sales onto the tooltip. And then it's a matter of unchecking the things we do not want in our tooltip. And there we go. We now have a horizontal version of the same view. Now this looks much more like you would used to like you'd be used to seeing with a seismogram that measures maybe the power of an earthquake. The last method I'm going to show you is how to create this with a Gantt chart. Now with the views that I've just created, you can see how the bars or the lines are rounded. If I want them to be more rectangular or square, I'm going to have to use a Gantt chart. So again, I'm going to take order date and I'm going to drag that to the right click and drag that to the columns and pick my continuous months. I'm going to take my order date, right click and drag that to detail and pick my MY. I'm going to drag sales plus to the rows, change my mark type to a Gantt bar. And this time I need to go double the length of the sales minus. So I'm going to create a calculated field and I'm going to call this my sales Gantt size. And here I want to do the sales minus. Let me just show you what it does when I just choose the sales one half minus. And if I put that on the size shelf, you see they all go to zero. But if I put some of sales onto the tooltip, notice how my value is half of what it should be. So in my Gantt size, I need to multiply this by two. Hit OK. And now we have our seismogram. I'm going to drag the min max to the colors. Edit the table calc to compute by both fields. And now we have our seismogram, but this time as, uh, as a Gantt chart. So it just depends on the look you want. You can have the square uh, or the rectangular with the nice square edges as a Gantt chart, or you can use the line to make it with rounded bars. Last thing again is to clean up our tooltip. And now I need to also get rid of the tooltip for the MY. And we have our month and our sales. Okay, one more thing to do is a bit of formatting. So I'm gonna, uh, let me edit my axis here. And I'm just gonna choose the, I'm gonna get rid of the title, or I can even call it sales. That's okay. But notice my formatting goes from positive to negative. I don't want that. So I'm actually going to go ahead and edit my axis. And I'm going to actually turn my tick marks off. So now I have just the sales header. I'm going to format the view to get rid of my axis rulers. Or maybe I'll just get rid of my, uh, my, my row axis ruler. I could see the minus line or the zero line there, so I'm going to get rid of that. I'm going to get rid of my grid lines. And there we go. And then lastly, maybe on my columns, I'll make my axis ruler a bit more obvious. Okay, so that's our seismogram. If I wanted that formatting to apply to the other sheets, I'm going to right click on the sheet name, copy formatting, go to my horizontal, paste formatting. My continuous vertical, paste the formatting, my discrete, and paste the formatting. And there we go. Hope you found that useful. Have a good day.